One very efficient way to make the world a more peaceful place would be for everyone to be vegan or vegetarian. There's lots of examples of animal emotions. So for example, when pigs and cows and dogs and cats and wolves play, it's very clear that they enjoy themselves, that they're feeling happiness, they're feeling very gleeful, they're feeling a lot of pleasure. And then on the other side of the coin, we know that when they lose a friend or a family member, they grieve deeply. They, for example, may stop eating, they may stop playing, they may stop hanging out with other group members, and their whole behavior patterns change. One of the best ways that I like to explain the emotional lives of animals is that we bond so closely with them. We don't bond with rocks and trees or even pet rocks like we do with real animals. I mean, I, I love trees and I love grass and I love water, but I don't bond with trees and grass and water like I do with other animals. So emotions are shared, and I like to say that emotions are the glue that hold animals together. And we can feel the emotions of other animals. Just look at the faces of people when they watch dogs play or if they know that a dog has lost a good companion. And when you look at the face and the behavior of the animals themselves, you know that they range from extreme joy and happiness to very deep grief and sorrow. There's so much we can learn from other animals. We can learn about trust, compassion, empathy, respect, dignity, peace, for example. And that's not to say that animals don't fight with one another, because they do on occasion. But when we really look at the scientific data, we've discovered, especially over the last few years, that for all the animals who have been studied, more than 95% of their behavior is what we call positive or prosocial. They greet one another, they play with one another, they care for one another. So I don't want to paint the picture that on occasion, they can't fight with one another, but it's actually very rare. But the fighting gains our attention. It's like in humans, we don't pay attention to all the nice things that humans do to one another. The news and the media are always presenting the nasty things because blood sells, nastiness sells. Slaughterhouses are just, they're worse than prisons for other animals. By the time a lot of the animals get there, like cows and pigs, they've already suffered in the trucks or in the trains on the way to the slaughterhouse. And then at the slaughterhouse, they're exposed not only to their own pain and suffering, but the pain and suffering of other animals. They can feel it, they can hear it, they can see it, and they can smell it. And although there are regulations and laws that govern how slaughterhouses work, they're rarely, if ever, enforced. And so on my one and only trip to a slaughterhouse, it was just terrible for me because I could feel the pain and suffering of the other animals. And I was just there for maybe a half hour. And so if slaughterhouses are to exist, then we need to be sure that the animals are treated in the best way that they can. But I vote to just get rid of all slaughterhouses, just close all factory farms down today, if not tomorrow. A lot of people think that as human beings, we have to eat other animals. And there's really no evidence for that. Even if there were one person out of a million who needed to eat animal protein, that would not even begin to justify the way in which many 
most humans eat other animals. And so the biology shows very clearly that we don't have to eat other animals. We also know that it's wrong to cause such excessive pain to the animals who we choose to eat. And I think it's really important to bring in the word choice. People make a choice about whom to eat or whom to wear. And we should not be blaming other animals for those choices. I really like to think that the world is just one united place, that everybody, every being is really connected and that we're really almost just one big organism. And people sometimes look at me as if I'm crazy. Verrucht is how you say it, yeah. And, um, but, but I'm not, because what I mean is that what I do at home in the home state of Colorado can influence people in China. And what they do can influence people in Austria or other countries. And so if we really sit back, we see that all living organisms are connected. Biologists call them webs of nature. And that when we mess around with one aspect of a web of nature, we affect all other aspects. So it's really not mystical that we put forth the idea that the world is one and that every being is interconnected. And I think as soon as people realize that, they'll start treating other animals and other human beings and nature with more respect and peace and dignity and love. If, if someone asked me what kind of future I would like, it's a pretty simple answer. I would like a more peaceful future. And, but the word peace to me means peaceful and respectful relationships between humans and non-human animals, between humans and other humans, and between humans and nature in general, that we respect the homes of other animals. And in order to have a more peaceful future, we really need to get rid of all the animal abuse that exists now, the use of animals in factory farms, the use of animals for entertainment for example. And the other way is for humane education to begin with young children, which is why I do a lot of work with Jane Goodall's Roots and Shoots groups, is so that they can feel the connection and have respect and dignity for other nature. But to me, the real big word is peace. If we have peace, then we'll all be happier. But people don't realize that. But if you ask people how they feel when they're engaging in peaceful and harmonious relationships, they feel great. And if you ask them how they feel when they're having conflict, they'll always feel very uneasy. So for me, the big word is peace.